doesn't like a good dip? You know, you're at a party and somebody's got chips and stuff and you want to, you know, get a little of that sour cream and onion dip thing going on there. But when it comes to investing, dip is something completely different. And it probably is one of these terms that you've heard a lot called buying the dip. Now, for those of you who aren't as savvy as investing, which this channel is for, I'm gonna to explain to you what buying a dip actually is and how to do it the right way and how to do it the wrong way because even though you know it's kind of obvious what it means, there are ways in which you could do it that could be disastrous. So we'll get into that. And by the end of this video, you'll probably have a better understanding of when to and when not to buy a dip. But before you put your hand up on your hip and you dip, you dip, you dip, I would appreciate it if you guys helped out the YouTube algorithm, help other people find this video. This channel's actually been growing pretty steadily over the past couple weeks, despite my uh, inconsistent posting nature, but I'm gonna be improving on that come 2022, because I didn't know if this channel's gonna work or not, and now that this channel does seem like it's actually gaining some momentum, I'm gonna be putting out far more videos on this channel in the next couple of months. So you can stay informed by that by hitting the subscribe button. And if you like this video and like the information, hit the like button and you might as well get the notification bell as well. By doing so, it lets other people know about this video and about this channel. And I definitely, again, appreciate it very much. Welcome to Wrestling With Finance, the financial YouTube channel for people who have wrestled with finance in the past and want to do better with it in the future. And we're gonna talk again about buying a dip. Now buying a dip is something that you probably can figure out what that means. It means when the stock price goes down or in the case the crypto price goes down or when real estate prices go down. And that's the time you wanna come in and buy. In fact, it's that old term of buy low, sell high and that kind of stuff for the traders out there. But for investors like myself, buying a dip takes on a bit of a different story. And there is a little bit more to just waiting for a stock price to go down and then buying in and then selling it high. A lot of people ran into this problem with the GameStop stock stuff from last year and the AMC stuff where a lot of people were buying in as the price was going up, which is the wrong thing to do. And then when the dip happened, they pulled out because they were afraid that the stock was losing price. And then GameStop at least went back up and they missed out on some of those profits. So that is kind of the whole problem with buying the dip and people not really understanding how to do it. And in the case of something like GameStop, once it's already basically on the news, it's probably too late to buy it. I know a couple people who I work with who bought it when it was fairly high. They made, you know, they put in a lot of money and made $2, you know, and then they pulled out. I think some people lost a lot of money on it. And again, it's just, it it's comes from not really understanding how the stock market works and not really wanting to learn and just going, well, a bunch of other people are doing this, so I'm gonna do it too. And then a bunch of other people pull out, so I'm gonna pull out too. And then as minority, the YouTube channel Minority Mindset would point out, that's a majority mindset, which is usually the wrong mindset. Now recently over the last month, from late November up until the middle of December, up really up until last week here, as we come to you at the end of 2022, there was a significant drop in the market across the board. Crypto was down and stocks were down quite significantly. But they basically, as of this recording, have rebounded right back up to where they were. So that would be considered a dip. And if, over the last three weeks, if you bought into probably some of the stuff that's in your portfolio, you'd be seeing a pretty hefty return. It was also a good time when there is a dip to kind of even out your investment. So if you have an investment that you're losing out on, but you want to hold on to it and the price goes down significantly and you were kind of underwater with it anyway, this might help you kind of balance out the loss to profit ratio because you're buying in at a lot lower and then your average cost winds up being less than the actual total cost when a stock goes back up. So that's another thing that you want to consider. But how do you do this entirely wrong? Like most people do it. The way you do this entirely wrong outside of not buying a dip when the dip happens and selling off when the dip happens, is you buy the dip on a company just because of the stock price. There are plenty of companies that drop down from $100 down to $3, down to $5 or $10 or whatever it is, and people just look at the price and look how far it dropped, like, okay, it's gonna go back up, so I'm gonna buy it then. That's not necessarily the best way to do it because that company could be on its way out of business you have to kind of understand a little bit more about what the company's fundamentals are. There's a famous story that Peter Lynch, who's one of the 
best investors of all time. He's definitely somebody, if you want to read a little bit more and get even further into understanding stocks and investment and finances, read Peter Lynch's books. Uh, he's the guy that, that was behind Fidelity. And he had told this great story about Kaiser and how he had invested in Kaiser when it dropped down to like $14, but then it kept dropping further and further down. And he, instead of panicking and selling like a lot of other people did, who thought they were buying the dip, but then the dip kept going, so they panicked and sold out of it, he understood that Kaiser has some essential fundamentals. And when Kaiser, which was a conglomerate, started consolidating a lot of the stuff and selling off some businesses and doing some things and moving things around, because also they didn't have a lot of debt, they had no debt actually at the time, the price then shot back up to 50, and he was proven to be right. Premature at 16, but uh, I said everything's fine, and eventually this will work out. And they, what they did is they gave away all their shares to their shareholders. They, they passed out shares in Kaiser Cement, they passed out shares in Kaiser Aluminum, they passed out their public shares in Kaiser Steel, they sold all the other businesses, and you get about $50 a share. And, but if you didn't understand the company, if you're just buying on the fact the stock had gone from 26 to 16, and then it got to 10, what would you do when it went to 9? What would you do when it went to 8? What would you do when it went to 7? This is the problem that people have, is they sell stocks because they didn't know why they bought it, then it went down, and they don't know what to do now. But stuff like that only happens either if you really understand a company and its fundamentals and what to look for in a company, as in whether or not the company has a high amount of debt, whether or not they're paying out too much to their investors and dividends, whether they are trying to acquire a new business if there's a conglomerate that's probably going to be a big loser for them and drag the rest of the company down. Those are things that you're going to want to look into and that information is widely available. It's just knowing how to look at that information and educating yourself again a little bit more about how to read companies and about how to analyze companies. But it's not just going, well, this company went from 50 to 10, so I'm going to buy in. You really should look and see, does this company have stable legs under it? Because the company that has stable legs on it, case in point, Apple stock dropped a lot a uh, few years ago when the sales of the iPhone weren't great. And everybody's like, oh no, Android's going to take over. But Apple's Apple. And Apple has so many solid fundamentals. So when all this scared money goes out, that's when you buy in. Warren Buffett has a great quote too, as well, speaking of another financial guru, about you know when to buy in and when to sell. You wanna buy in when people are panicking and scared and you want to sell when people are feeling overly confident. Um, it's a rule of thumb to get into, but again, as investors, I usually don't want to sell anything. The only time I'm gonna sell off something is if I do think it is a complete loser and the company is falling apart. I did sell some stuff. I will talk about that before the end of the year some of the stocks that I sold, also for tax loss harvesting, but some of the stocks that I kept on to. But the, if you guys have any questions about the dip and buying the dip and when to buy the dip, let your voice be heard in the comment box below. If you like this video, of course, be sure to hit the like button and share this video on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or wherever you talk about finances and share it with your friends. And you can also go down in the description box and get started on buying some of these stocks and looking for dips. You can sign up for Webull and get two free stocks that could be worth up to $2,300. And you can just sign up there. They have a great app on Webull as well. It's just called Paper Trading, where you're basically pretending that you're investing, but you're not actually putting any money within it. And you'll see if you have put this money in, you can see over time whether or not that investment would have grown or lost. And you can kind of get your feet wet if you're very new to investing by doing that and not really risking any money before you actually go put some money into the market. But thank you guys for checking out this video. I will have more videos for you guys pretty soon here on Wrestling With Finance. I appreciate you guys watching. And until next time, be safe.